Hey, what's happening? Handy here with a brand new webcam. It is the Logitech HD C910. And so far, from around about 24 hours of use of it, I am pretty happy with it. Now, there's a few ups and downs. I'm running this through a Mac, so on the Mac, it doesn't come with the uh, avatars feature, but that's a bit of a play toy thing, really, so, you know, it's no real big deal. Um, it features stereo sound and it's got autofocus, so I'll just run it through its paces so you can get a bit of a feel for it. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with it though. The picture quality is great for a webcam, which is great. So, here's the autofocus. So obviously, it's on me at the moment. If I put something a little closer, you'll notice it will. Give it a moment. There we go. There's our autofocus. If I pull that away, it's taken about a second to kick in, which is pretty good at uh, all up. Uh, as far as the stereo sound goes, here's an annoying sound, pan from left to right. A little closer. So that gives you a bit of an idea. It's not, uh, because the speakers or the, because the mics are so close together, it's only mild, but just a bit of stereo enhancement, you know, for a bit of sense of depth is a good thing in itself as well. Um, so I mentioned the no avatars thing with the Mac. Um, so great picture, great that it's widescreen, which is really good. Uh, Logitech uh, now supports the Mac, so uh, that's great. Uh, they give you a bit of software, which I downloaded. It's about 70 meg, uh, downloaded really quick, which was really good. The file sizes are really tiny. My idea of getting this cam was for doing uh, quick videos uh, on my channel when I don't want to have to get my video camera out and then throw them onto the computer after just that, that time factor of having things being nice and quick. Now there's, there's ups and downs. The files are tiny, which is great, so I'm taking up heaps less space. 30, uh, what was it, 30 seconds of video was taking up around about eight meg, which is absolutely nothing. The downside of that though, that I've heard no one else mention yet, is this. As soon as you do a video and you hit stop, it will then compress the video after, and you can't say, oh, that was a bad take, I don't want that. You have to sit there, and it takes roughly the amount of time of the video that you've just shot. So if you do a three minute video and you mess it up, and you want to do another take, you've got to wait three minutes for this thing to do its compression, which is really annoying. So I think what I'm going to do, inevitably I'm going to have to do retakes when I'm doing you know, videos at some stage or another, is instead of stopping and doing another take, I'm just going to keep on going because the file sizes are so tiny. And then um, you know, just take what I need of that that portion of the whole video, and just you know, you may have three minutes extra, but it doesn't matter because uh, you know that's going to be the easier way to go. So that's a little annoying, but I think it'll be workable. We'll have to see what happens when I run into that. Price-wise, at a really good price, I believe these are made in New Zealand or Australia. So for us Aussies, we actually get something at a better price for a change rather than those in the US. I always see the uh, retail price price being 150 for US. Uh, I got it on eBay for $95 delivered, and that was actually through uh, Logitech's eBay um, page. So really good way to get it if you're in Australia or New Zealand for a great price. And for an HD camera, I mean, this is mad for people who don't want to go buying video cameras. The sound is not great. It's kind of lacking in the top end, but for you know purposes of like YouTubing and stuff like that, kick ass, does the job fine. This is in comparison to like a $1,000 video camera I'm talking about here. The picture isn't too far behind. Um, another downside is there is no image control in the sense of working with your contrast and all that sort of thing. This is on the Mac, maybe on the uh, PC one there is a bit there, which is annoying. And I figured, okay, well I can deal with that once I throw it into Final Cut Pro where I do my video editing, but it doesn't react very nicely at all. As soon as you do any tweaking, it gives like this whitish sheen to the entire picture. Uh, which is just ugly, so it's actually better leaving it as it was. So I found in this room when I was lighting it up last night, it's daytime now, so what I've done is I've just put a bit of a cover. I'll let you have a look around the room so you can kind of see what I'm working with here. I've put a bit of a cover over here, otherwise if I have just have my window open, I just get kind of whited out on one side. If I go to the other side so you can see what we've got going on there, I've intentionally opened the door over here into my lounge room just so I'm getting a bit of ambient light filling back in on the other side. And so this room is actually quite dark, but you can see the um, what happens is 
the camera itself will even things up for you. Now I've got a green floor and what I was having last night was this issue of using these ambient lights that I've got going on is I was getting this greenish haze and you can almost see it now as, as long as it translates the same uh, once I throw this up to YouTube. Like these white walls have a greenish tinge to them and I think that's just from the ambient light coming off the floor and that, that's how we're getting that greenish thing. Now it's okay because for me I'm being lit by the sides here and I'm coming up nice and pretty authentic colored, authentic Andy color. Um, but yeah, the room isn't too, too good. And obviously once you're just using ambient lights at nighttime, I'll do another demo for that as well. Uh, you'll see that it doesn't come up too good and you can't really go editing it and you get a, I guess, you know, if you've got like a brown floor or something that isn't like a real color, it's a tone or something, then you should be all right. Uh, and you won't have that issue, but I've tried different things with colors. Uh, with the lighting, but it hasn't really done much. So that's something to keep in mind if you're shooting at nighttime. If it's daytime, it's pretty damn good like this. Obviously, you're just kind of at the mercy of, of uh, you know, the conditions. Right now, I'm looking a little bit darker all of a sudden because, you know, clouds have come over and then I'm going to light up again, which you really want to have that stable recording environment. Um, so you've always got that consistency. But this is for kick around, quick kick, quick videos anyway. So it's not such a bad thing. Um, so I mentioned the render audio. You can use Photo Booth if you're using your Mac. You can use it on there as well, but it doesn't grab it in widescreen. It only does it in regular. So you can mess around with the effects and stuff on there if you feel like it. But again, that's just a muck around thing. So all up, there's some ups, there's some downs, but for a hundred dollars, it's pretty damn good, and you can still use it for you know just webcam chatting. I've got to give a, a test of that still. I haven't done that yet, but um. Really, really cool if you want to get into making YouTube videos or you know you want a good quality webcam, um, really good way to go. I think $100 is, is a really good price. Some people have said they think that's a bit steep, but for HD compared to a video camera, thumbs up. I like it. I'll give you a link so you can uh, check out more details and buy one if you wish. All right, there you go. That's my review of the Logitech C910.